Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. We're beginning a study of the first missionary journey. We're looking in the book of Acts at the amazing miracles of the Holy Spirit. Now, as Paul goes on his first missionary journey, we are going to see the Holy Spirit work in phenomenal ways. You say, Derek, what's that got to do with me? Something that happened 2,000 years ago. Well, I want to challenge you that God wants to work in you and through you in a powerful way today. Do you believe that's possible? Yeah, absolutely. And so we're, we're looking at this story, not just about ancient history, but about what the Holy Spirit wants to do in His church today. We're glad you're part of that miracle, part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And I just want to take a moment to greet a few of our Hope Sabbath School members. Corrine, writing from Jamaica. Anyone from Jamaica here? You don't look excited. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. She says, good day. That sounds Australian. <laughs> I enjoy watching Hope Sabbath School and the lessons have been fulfilling. I'm a church member all my life, but I have fallen prey to false teachings. Mm. I know God is able to lead me and I will overcome. Please keep me in prayer and God bless Hope Sabbath School. Well, I would say if you've fallen into false teaching, the best place to be is studying the Word of God. Amen. Amen an in-depth interactive study. And God's going to use you to help other people who may be confused, Corrine. So thank you for being part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Jody writes from the U.S. and says, I discovered Hope Channel and Hope Sabbath School over a year ago. I don't think I've missed an episode since. I've even watched a couple of them in the archives. So by the way, if you don't know, you can go back to our website, hopetv.org slash hope ss you can not only watch the whole acts series that we're doing now but past series jody did that she said i have a prayer request i'm currently separated from my husband please pray that he will discover god's love and grace to overcome addictions mm -hmm. there's a story there hope sabbath school has been a tremendous comfort during this time when i can't sleep I turn on Hope Sabbath School and I'm reminded that there is hope in Jesus. Amen. Well, I just want to say thank you for writing to us, Jody. And there is hope in Jesus, mm -hmm. even for people who are bound by addictions. Mm -hmm. There is freedom for those who cry out to him. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching today and you're saying, I, I'm, I'm like that, I just want to encourage you to cry out to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's the healer. He's the one who sets us free. Johanna writes from Somalia. Have we had someone write from Somalia before? Maybe, right? Dear Sabbath School, she says, Hope Sabbath School, I am now able to follow Hope Sabbath School from Somalia using my smartphone. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Use your minutes wisely. God really has blessed me with the lessons through Hope Sabbath School. Well, we're just so happy, Johanna, that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family there in Somalia. Here's a little note that was sent to me from a donor in Washington State. It just says, thank you for the wonderful inspirational programs. May God continue to bless you as you feed us spiritually through the Word of God. Amen. You know, I just want to thank those of you who are supporting Hope Sabbath School. We don't, we don't ask people to do that, but God touches people's hearts and we're donor supported. So thank you for being part of the miracle. One last note from Sakino. You're thinking Japan, aren't you? Florida. <laughs> Sakino writes and says, I've listened to Hope Sabbath School for a number of years and I've always been blessed. The Holy Spirit led me to your program. Amen. And I found it to be more of a blessing than ever. Keep up the good work as we await our precious master's return. And God bless you. Well, to hear that the Holy Spirit led someone like Sakino to Hope Sabbath School brings great joy to our hearts. Amen. Because that's what we pray, that the miracle could happen. And even today, as we're studying about Paul's first missionary journey, we'll read about how God works in miraculous ways, not just back then, but have faith to believe that He can do so today. Mm -hmm. But before we begin our study, we have a song to sing. Psalm 105, we're starting to learn it now. Some of you are singing it in your sleep. <laughs> oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people, sing to him. We want to do that together. So why don't you sing with us? Oh, give thanks. 
You know, the Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So what about those who are saved? Can we still call upon the name of the Lord? Yes. Absolutely. To be Lord of our lives today, to be with us and in us by His Spirit, and to see the miracle of the book of Acts repeated in our day. Would you join with us as we pray that that could happen? Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, it is our prayer. We call upon the Lord. You are the Lord of all to let the miracle that happened in the book of Acts be repeated again in our day. Teach us as we study from the first missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're in the book of Acts and we've been challenged. There's so much here, isn't there? But uh, we're going to begin looking at a missionary journey. And it's during this journey that he's no longer called Saul, which was his Hebrew name, but Paulos, or Paul, which was his Greek name. Mm. Now, I always thought they changed the name because he was converted, but he's called Saul after his conversion. But as he goes on this missionary journey to the Gentiles, he takes his Roman name, and he's called Paulos, or Paul. Mm. And we're going to pick up the story in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. And Juliana, would you begin our study today? I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Why do you think that was an important preparation for this first missionary journey? That, first of all, the Spirit says, do this to these people, and then something very, what would you call it? Uh, concrete, right? Very tangible. visible. Yeah, tangible, right? Yeah. Laid hands on them and prayed for them. Why do you think that was important as they went out on their first missionary journey? Travis? I think it's important when you enter into the f missionary field or enter, enter God's work to be armed. And you need to be equipped. And um, I think the, when they laid hands and prayed for them, they were equipping them, making sure that they were going under the, the power and authority. Now, they prayed too, though, right? I mean, Stephanie, we pray. We say, Lord, be with me. Is there a special blessing you think that comes when, when the believers gather and pray? I do. I think so. I think that there's something to say when you're being commissioned to go to do a special work that that they knew, it's also accountability, that okay. these folks have prayed and they anticipate what God will do through you. Can anybody give a testimony, I'm not, not long testimony, but maybe you were going on a mission trip or you were going to do a special evangelistic meeting or something and it was meaningful to you that the community gathered and prayed mm -hmm. for you? Did anybody, did that happen to anyone? I know it's happened to me. I remember one time I was feeling weak and my wife mm -hmm. laid her hands on me, I was about to teach, and she mm -hmm. prayed the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. power. I could have prayed by myself, mm -hmm. Yes. but there is something special, isn't there, when the community comes. I'm sure they experienced that 
as they were about to go out. Um, so he's about to go. He changes his name. At least he's begin referred to now as Paulos, right, or Paul. Mm -hmm. What are some other changes that he's going to make as he goes out to uh, be what, what some call the apostle to the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at a couple of verses. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. And Philippians 3. These are his own description. Nicole, do you have uh, 1 Corinthians there? Yes. He's not only going by his Roman name, not just by his Hebrew name, but uh, let's see what he says in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. The New International Version of 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23 says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Before we comment on that, someone read Philippians 3, 7 and 8, and then we'll look at them together. Someone have Philippians chapter 3, hold it, verses 7 and 8, and let's see what they have in common. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. So two things he's doing. He's, uh, he's letting go of some things and he's taking on some things. What, what, describe that to me in simple language. He's going on a missionary journey and he's saying, help me someone. Yes, Jonathan? Yeah, I think he's um, thinking about, okay, what are the people that I'm going to, what are they going to uh, be at home listening to? I mean, like they, they, he's grown up his whole life listening to the law and the prophets and all these things, but these Greeks don't know that. So he's setting aside these things that he values and says, yes, I believe they're important and good, but I'm not going to make that my focus, and, and th he's going to reach them where they are. All right, so he's, uh, he's going to be sensitive to that. Stephanie? I sense that he's, uh, he's adjusting the method, but he's not adjusting the message. Okay, because the message is? Jesus, Jesus Christ. One word, yeah. right? That's, That's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he's not compromising. Well, let's just talk about Greek mythology. No, mm. he's going right. to say, I've determined to know nothing among you yes. except Jesus Christ. Amen and him crucified, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the method. Yeah. So could that affect the way he would dress? Mm -hmm. It could. could. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the could. way he would eat? Mm -hmm. Potentially. Potentially, maybe not. Unclean. Maybe not some things that he, he knew were not healthy or right. drink that were not healthy, but maybe the way he ate them? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading a, a biography of Hudson Taylor he was a missionary mm -hmm. to China. Mm. One thing he did that he was severely criticized for. Do you know what it was? Mm. Mm. Severely criticized. He dressed like a local. He dressed like a had Chinese a long... person. And he shaved the front of his head and had a, a ponytail, which he had to plait, first of all, with fake hair because he didn't have that much hair. Mm. So he had his little pigtail. And what was he trying to do? Make them Become one of them. That's right. He was trying to remove any obstacles mm -hmm. because the goal was, what was the goal? What did we read? Save the Save Jesus. Jesus. That's right. To win some for Christ, yes. right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take on things that are not wrong. Correct. They're just different. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let go of anything that I don't have to hold on to. Right. in order to reach people for Christ. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a pretty powerful lesson for today, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We could think about the implications of that. So they set off on their journey. Acts 13, verses 4 and 5. Tigist, if you could read that for us. And uh, my question is, why do you think they stopped first in Cyprus? 
you might say that's where the boat stopped. But <laughs> they could have taken many boats. So Acts 13, verses 4 and 5. I'm going to read a New King James Version, 13, 4, uh, 5. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleuc Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. This is John Mark who's traveling with them. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to tell me why they went to Cyprus first? Nicole? The Holy Spirit sent them there. That's okay, right. that's very good because they, they were being led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there a reason perhaps why the Holy Spirit let, sent them to Cyprus first? I have a note here in my Bible that says that Barnabas was a native of the island and Saul um, go, go to Cyprus, it says here. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. In fact, if you remember when we read in Acts 4 that he gave a piece of property, mm. you remember that? Yeah. It says he was from Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So Nicole gave the correct answer. The correct answer always in the book mm -hmm. of Acts, the Holy Spirit told them to do it. <laughs> but uh, don't you remember what Jesus said? Uh, start... Uh, Home. Start at home and then go to the neighboring places and eventually go to Ends of the earth. earth. So uh, I think there's some interest there that he maybe said, Let, let's, let's start here. Because remember at this point as the beginning of the journey that Barnabas is still kind of the primary person. He's the mentor. He's yes. kind of the, the elder one, yes. right? So they end up going to Cyprus first. Let's see what happens there, Stephanie in Acts 13, verses 6 to 12. We should expect from everything we know about Paul's preaching and Barnabas too, something's going to happen. What is it? Two things will happen. Persecution. persecution. One is there's going to be persecution or opposition. Souls and two, souls will souls be one. people are going to be one for Christ. Those two things are going to happen. The miracle of God. The By the miracle, miracle of God. Yeah. Let's see what happens in Acts 13, verses 6 to 12. All right, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Barjehos, Bar Barjesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Paul, who also is called Paul, I'm sorry, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went out seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So, so this uh, sorcerer is, is Jewish. He should have known better, right? He should have known the truth of God, even if he hadn't yet heard the truth about Messiah. But he's a sorcerer. And what, what impacts you the most as you see this story unfold? I see the devil at work still, even mm. in the midst of the gospel going out. I mean, you can see that the devil is using the sorcerer to stop or hinder the progress of the work, um, but we need to be careful. You remember the parable of the seed, that sometimes the seed would fall and the birds would come and mm -hmm. take it before yeah. it could find root? That's exactly what the sorcerer is trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. What else impacts you, Nicole, as you read this story? That because Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, he could have a boldness towards this <laughs> demon and yeah. say, listen, what are you doing? So it, it empowers us that we yes. can, if we have the Holy Spirit, get to the point where we can say these kind of things to individuals that are not in the light. Doesn't it startle you a little, though, to, that he called him, you son of the devil? Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't want to be, what, obnoxious. Right. 
So how do you know when to be that mm. confrontational? Mm. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Say it louder. Holy Spirit. That's the only way. Otherwise, you could be one of those so-called Christians that's going around being obnoxious to everybody. And, and how much of the love of God is revealed? None. None. You, you got to make sure that when you're going to speak that directly. But he does. He's connected. And, and the, the fruit of his work is there. Uh -huh. Anybody else? What impacts you? It's a startling story. Why, why does the proconsul as he's called in my translation. Why does he believe? Verse 12. That's what stood out to me. It says that he believed uh, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. So it wasn't the miracle that converted him. God had already um, done a work in his heart when he had just heard their message. But seeing that, that was like the confirmation. Mm -hmm. In fact, didn't we in a previous study talk about the fact that the signs and the wonders confirm the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're saying he heard the word, but when he saw the power of God manifest, even in opposing this person who lived on his island, it really brought conviction to him, right? Mm -hmm. It's amazing as the story unfolds. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to share a time when, um, when you experience some intense opposition. Uh, has anybody experienced that? You were out doing mm -hmm. mission work, and you just felt like, you know, the devil himself had sent opposition. Jonathan? Yeah, there was a time in my life where um, first I had made some mistakes and kind of gotten myself into some beliefs that were not entirely uh, biblical. But then as I began to realize it and began to um, go back to scripture and study things out and to find important truths, I then found a whole bunch of things around me all kind of arrayed to combat what I was learning in different ways, and it was, it was eye-opening. It was also, uh, it was, it just made me realize how much we can all be pulled into a battle, whether we realize it or not. What, what, I mean, there were things about different things about Scripture and, and how the Holy Spirit works, and all kinds of things that that were very. I was studying, and then I was seeing played out in a real way in my church, and um, it was, it was eye-opening. Sounds like there are times when we see the battle more intensely than other times. Has anyone else seen that? It, it, Travis, do you have an experience? There was uh, a group of us who were uh, just going in the community, just telling people about Jesus, and we were forbidden by some to go to certain areas, and we had made plans to go. And we knew that we'd been commissioned to go. All of us have. And so, uh, so we went anyway. And um, it was a, a young lady with three children um, accepted Jesus. Amen. And it's still even currently yet today doing Bible studies uh, with, with part of the group. Yeah. So and someone tried to hinder you from going to tell yeah. you that you shouldn't go to that area. That we shouldn't go. Mm. Yes, Juliana. Um, I had the opportunity to go on a mission trip to Zambia several years ago. And there was one Sabbath when um, I was speaking <laughs> that there was a woman who came um, to the congregation, we were meeting outside because the meetings were larger than the church could hold, uh, which was itself a blessing. But this woman came by and started um, speaking like sorceries over the congregation because she was unhappy with what was taking place. And, and some of the elders had to go off and try to like work with her. But that was the first time I had ever experienced, you know, a truly a spiritual battle face to face in that way. Um, I was with the congregation working with them and then this woman is trying to come and bring upheaval and praise God that it, it didn't happen the way that she was expecting. But it was a sign to me and everyone else there that this was something very real. And you know, it's interesting as we continue to study the book of Acts that Paul experienced exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. that, that in very uh, startling ways, the enemy tries to hinder what what God is about to do, either by trying to kill the messenger mm -hmm. or to distract with people shouting or doing something or like this sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at verse 13. Uh, and Nancy, if you could read that for us, we're still in Acts chapter 13. And uh, excuse me, Acts chapter, mm -hmm. yeah, 13 and verse 13 now. Um, it mentions a young man named John Mark. Acts 13 and verse 13. Okay. It says, Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now this is the John that we heard about with the 
the um, release of Peter from prison in a previous mm -hmm. study. His mother, John Mark, his name was, the Gospel of Mark, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mary, we learn, was his mother. And apparently he was traveling with them. And uh, why did he go home? Well, let's look and see if we can find out. Go to Acts 15, verses 37 to 39. Katie, if you could read that for us, and we'll come back to the story in Acts 13. But uh, they've gone to Cyprus, they're going on, and then John Mark, who's traveling with them, goes back. All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Acts 15, 37 through 39. And it says, Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John, called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had de departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. So what can we learn from the fact, and we don't know for sure because it doesn't tell us, so you're going to have to read between the lines. What can we learn from the fact that this young man, John Mark, says, I'm going home. <laughs> and by the way, praise God, Barnabas, who's, whose name means son of encouragement, son of encouragement yeah. later says, we need to give him another chance. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Paul embarrasses himself by being very rigid mm -hmm. and saying, no. Mm -hmm. I think he regretted that many years later. Sure. But uh, Barnabas gives him another chance. But, but think with me, why, why do you think John Mark may have said, I think I want to go home? Anybody? What do you think? I think there's probably a, a fairly logical answer as we look at the, the narrative in the book of Acts. He, what do you think, Jonathan? He didn't realize what he would sign up for. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I'd like to go on a world tour. Yeah. Um, uh, let's not be that hard on him. But, but what, what didn't he anticipate? I don't, think he, I don't think he anticipated the work involved. Like, this isn't just a vacation. That okay. This is... When you're entering, it's work. All right, and? And then maybe Paul's temperament. <laughs> Paul's temperament and? The persecution that he faced. This is he, going to be he, intense. Oh, mm. It's right. not just work. And Paul may be grouchy at times, I suppose. <laughs> but this, this is battle. Mm -hmm. so we just cool. saw what happened in Cyprus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is going to be intense opposition and even persecution. I was going to mm -hmm. say not just not just from people, but from the spiritual realm as well. And that, that can be extremely terrifying uh, when you're not completely, you know, del delved into God and say, God, please help me with this, or let's keep my, my focus on Jesus. He will help us through this. But if you don't have that, it's kind of like Peter on the water, right? You have the whole storm. He has his eye on Jesus. We're good. The moment he looks away, I'm sinking. And I don't think that we can really give John Mark a hard time because I think a lot of us probably would feel the same way until we had a Barnabas-like person who encouraged us. We're going to keep moving and I'll give you a chance to share in a little while. Go to mm. Acts 13 verses 38 and 39. Paul comes to the synagogue at Antioch in Pisidia. It's a little confusing because there are two Antiochs. This is the one in Pisidia, not the one where they were first called Christians, Antioch. <laughs> Um, let's see what the essence of Paul's message there is. And uh, Rodney, could you read verses 38 and 39 for us? So Acts 13, verses 38, 38 and, 39. and 39. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Does that remind you of another sermon preached at another time? Through him comes the forgiveness of sins? Mm -hmm. Where? Pentecost, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Repent and be baptized for the... Repentance. Remission of Forgiveness sins. of your sins, right? Mm -hmm. Promises for you and for your, for your children. Mm -hmm. And this understanding that Paul has that dealing with sin doesn't come by... Law keeping. Uh, law keeping. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Even if you're perfect from here on out, it doesn't. It comes by the grace of God through yes. Jesus Christ. So he's starting to focus his message. We know it's all about... 
Jesus. It's all about Jesus, but he's saying Jesus can deal with your sin problem, Amen. which Amen. brings death, right? Mm -hmm. But he can deal with that, and it's not by what you do, but by what he has done. Amen. Let's see how they respond. In Acts chapter 13, verses 42 to 44. Autumn, could you read Acts 13, 42 to 44? I am reading from the New International Version, Acts, 40, or Acts 13, 42 through 44. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Juda Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. How would you describe the response? <laughs> Overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Awesome, right? I mean, it almost sounds like Pentecost mm -hmm. of not only the Jews, but the Gentiles, and then the whole city shows up. Kind of Juliana, like too many to get in the church, right? Like in Zambia. Everybody shows up. But you remember what happened in her experience in Zambia? Well, to see the same thing, unfortunately, Stephanie, if you could read on, is going to happen here. Uh, look at verses uh, 45 through 50 All right, of Acts 13. The King James Version says it this way. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. Now it's very interesting because both mm. Paul and Barnabas are sensing that they're not just to go to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And mm. the Holy Spirit helps him to remember the word of a Hebrew prophet. Mm. Did you notice mm. what prophet he quotes from? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet who said, what? I have set you as a light to the, to the Gentiles. Gentiles. So he didn't see that before, did he? We <laughs> talked about setting aside old ways of thinking. But now the Holy Spirit saying, I've been trying to tell you all along, right? Mm -hmm. This has got to go to Everyone. the world. It's got to go to the ends of the earth. Let's see how they handle the opposition. Uh, Lourdes, could you read verses 51 and 52? And then I want to say, what's the lesson that we could learn? Uh, they're, they're, they're under attack again. How do they respond? Acts 13, 51 and 52. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Um, but they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium, Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with them, with the Holy Spirit. Which disciples is that talking about? Is that talking about Barnabas and Paul or is it talking about the people who believed, uh, who heard them preach? Both. It's talking about all of them, right? Yes. Why were they filled with joy even though there was such intense opposition? Hearts that, were one for Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Because? Hearts were one for Jesus. Exactly. Amen. They chose to focus on what God was doing. Amen. And not what, what man was doing. On what yeah. the devil was doing mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. people, yes. right? Mm -hmm. They chose to focus on that. Now, let's talk about the shake the dust off of their feet. Uh, isn't that what it said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What, what does that mean? Anybody? That's used uh, in Matthew as well. Okay. When Jesus sends out the disciples. Um, he tells them that if anyone doesn't accept their message, they're to shake the dust off their feet and just move on. So it just means don't let it get to you. Don't take it personal. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to quit now because something didn't go right. You know, persevere in the Lord. Look to Him and remain strong in your faith. And, and I think something really important, because in that same Sermon on the Mount where he talks about that, 
he also says, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's not saying stop caring about them, but don't... Right. Wallow. Mm. Don't what? Kind of wallow in what's... what's yeah, don't, right don't get um, burdened down with the fact that not everybody wants to listen, Travis. Could he be saying, don't worry about the ground you covered to get here. I got a new path for you. <laughs> you know, it's very easy that we could get bogged down by places where it's not working and mm -hmm. the Spirit's saying, go where... It is going yeah. to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There'll be another time. He's not going to give up on those people. Lourdes? And also, um, I remember we were praying for a family member of mine. We pray and pray and nothing happened. And we sort of, when we kind of lose hope, it happened. He came to God. So maybe it wasn't the right time. The mm -hmm. fruit wasn't ripe. Yes. So why force it when maybe somebody's already ripe? I mean, the, it wasn't the time yet. Mm. So it sounds yeah. like uh, we've been hearing this through this series. Really need to be open to the Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we got to be, you son of the devil. Notice I didn't point at any of you. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt your feelings, right? You son of the devil. Sometimes we need to do that. And, and other times we don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we need to stay, even if it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to leave. Yeah. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit's wisdom in all of that. Nancy? You know, we have freedom of choice. Some people will choose not to accept Christ. Jesus himself was rejected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... Certainly that's true, but I, th I think Lourdes' point is they may be ready to make a choice, but not now. Right. And I think doesn't Paul kind of go back over the same ground later? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may be some others later. Well, let's keep moving in the story. They're going to visit Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Acts 14, verses 1 through 7. Juliana, could you read that for us? And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. So I have a practical question for you. How do I know when I should stay, even if it's difficult, and when I should leave? The Holy Spirit will tell you. <laughs> we come back to the same answer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, look at a couple of examples, if you would. Acts 18, verses 9 through 11, and Acts 22, 17 to 21. It, it really is that practical mm -hmm. to tell you when to go and when to stay. Travis, could you read for us Acts 9, 18, verses 9 through 11? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, uh, chapter 18, verses 9 Three eleven. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you. For I have many people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Amen. So here we are. We're seeing God work through their ministry, and uh, how would you describe the response they received there? Mm -hmm. Stay. Yeah. Huh? Well, stay. Stay. See what God's doing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. They're going to move on from there to Lystra in verse 8 of chapter 14, and, and here they're going to face a whole new challenge, verses 8 through 13. And then I'll have someone continue reading. Acts 14, verses 8 through 13. And uh, Rodney, could you read that for us? What's the new challenge they face here? Sure. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who, um, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intensely, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. 
and he leaped and walked. Now when the people saw that Paul had done what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Hmm. And keep reading through verse 13. For and us. Barnabas, they <coughs> called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was a chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. So what's the new challenge here? They're being treated like gods. <sighs> They're treating them like gods. They're treating them like gods. And what's the temptation? Is there a temptation here for these? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. What's the temptation? To, to go along with it. Accept the glory. To say, well, if we can Enjoy accomplish it. a good outcome. We'll do this. Oh. Mm. Stephanie, what's wrong with that picture? It wasn't the truth. I mean, you stay with the God's plan, and God's plan would not be to have someone worship you. We need to worship God, and you don't, you don't accomplish God's plan by using the devil's tactics. Mm -hmm. So it's not only not true that they're not Zeus yeah. and Hermes, but right. they know clearly that Absolutely. nobody should be worshiping them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, they, wow. Satan, is he behind this too? Sure, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, let, let's see what happens when they have the courage to say, no, that's not the way it is. Um, Haiti, could you read for us uh, verses 14 down through verse 18? Sure. And we're still in chapter 14? Yes, 14 verses okay. 14 through 18. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men! Why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them. Who in bygone generations allowed all nations to, to walk in their own ways? Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. So they're trying to <laughs> tell the truth. And what's the response of the crowd? They they're still to trying to. It's kind of falling on deaf ears. Yeah, it's like they're still not hearing. And so the enemy says, well, I'll try something else. Verse 19. Nancy, could you read that for us? I'm still in chapter 14. What, what does the enemy do now? Right, from the New King James Version. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Mm -hmm. So uh, why would these Jews from, uh, what were the two towns they came from? Antioch, Antioch and Iconium. Why would they travel all the way there just to oppose what mm -hmm. God was doing in the city? They're What's the answer? The enemy they were stop the work. The answer is the enemy is behind it. I mean, they are as dedicated in opposing the truth yeah. as, Paul is as Paul and Barnabas are in sharing the truth, mm -hmm. right? I would like to say that what's even worse yet, instead of doing it themselves, they get others to do it for them mm. and convince others to do it for them. Sure. Well, they may have been part of the, the group that was stoning them too, but they, mm. they incited the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think was going through Paul's mind. Was Barnabas stoned too, by the way? Were they both stoned? Just as Just Paul. Paul. Just as Paul. Just Paul, okay. What do you think was going through his mind? Huh? <laughs> I hope he was thinking about Stephen. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And, you know, he was For those, by the way, who don't know that right. story, oh. this is before Paul has become a yes. Christian, right? Yes. Saul of Tarsus. What, what was the story back there recorded in, uh, in the book yes. of Acts, end of chapter 7? Yeah, he was actually there at the stoning of Stephen, and he was encouraging that. Um, and so he saw Stephen's commitment. And I can't help but think that that gave him encouragement. He said, you know what? Anything for Christ. Wow. Mm. Do you think, uh, I, I'm just wondering, help me, help me with this. I'm wondering if the thought came mm. of 
Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, true. You yes. know, Lord Jesus, I, Amen. I wonder if he prayed, Lord, if this is it. Mm -hmm. I mean, did he know he was going to come out of this stoning? No. 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 Into your hands. I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit, mm. my breath, my life. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think he maybe had a flashback. Mm. Yeah. And um, yep. so what do you do when you're in that kind of situation where your life is hanging by a thread? <laughs> what do you do? Call out to God. Yeah. Like our, 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 our memory verse says, you call in the name of the Lord. Yeah. You call on him and you, and he gives you the strength because if you have a relationship, he'll give you that strength. And what would you call him. out? Oh, Lord, get me out of here. <laughs> you might just say, Jesus, help me. Yes. I love the short prayer that um, Peter yeah. prayed when he was sinking. Save me. Save me. Lord, <laughs> save me. <laughs> he probably said it like that too. Save me, you know. <laughs> it was like, Lord, save me. <laughs> save me. Yeah. Um, whatever that looks like yes. in life or death. Amen. Whatever it looks like, yes. right? He's, he's dragged out of the city and he's stoned. Um, the opposition is intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, God is able to bring good out of bad situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's keep reading in Acts chapter 14. This one chapter we're in could be a whole book. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 14, verses 20 through 23. And Nicole, could you read that? Verses 20 through 23. What good was God able to bring out of this uh, bad situation? Acts 14, 20 through 23 of the New International Version says, But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day he and Barnabas left for Derbe. They preached the gospel in, the, in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Amen. So <laughs> well, I'm kind of amazed by what it says that they... <laughs> They preached, there were many disciples. We say, praise God, right? Mm -hmm. Then they went back to Lystra. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was where the, he, he'd just been stoned. 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 And then they went back to Antioch Antioch and Iconium, Iconium. where the people had come from, come from <laughs> to incite the rabble to stone them. Right. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? Wouldn't you say, let's go somewhere? Why, why do you think they made a U-turn and went back to the same places? Holy Spirit. <laughs> Travis has got the answer for all of those questions in the book of Acts. Uh, Stephanie? Well, I think that's true, but they were, in verse 19, they thought he was dead. And then in verse 20, it says, and the disciples stood around him. He rose up and went back into the city. So, I mean, here's a man who they thought was dead. Now he's out preaching. I think I would listen too. If I heard that testimony. <laughs> so I don't know. What did he look like? Do you think he had cuts and bruises? Probably. Yeah. Probably. You know? Otherwise, yeah. they say, well, that's someone else that just looks like him. He's right. like, no. He gets up with the, you know, lacerations and the bruises. And maybe he walks like this back into the city, you know, with a little help. Um, unstoppable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hold it. I think that the Satan, he tries to hinder us oftentimes in a place where there's much to be done. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they realized that and that's why they went back because there was so much opposition. There must be something special that God wants them to do there. Mm -hmm. And, and wow. a great many believed, right, yeah. Rodney? Right. I was just thinking that this same man that was stoned, it's a miracle that he's restored and he's preaching the same message that he was stoned for. Mm. So. Others would be like, there's, there's really something powerful here that we're missing and we yeah. need. Rather than saying, let's go back in and talk about something else, right. shall we? <laughs> no, no, they've got a clear message and a clear mission. Yes. Mm. I think that Paul could identify with them because that was him before. Ah. He went after people just yeah. as mm. relentlessly as they were going after him. And he knew that in his, in his case, um, as in everyone's case, Jesus just wants our hearts and he'll, 
he's he's relentless in his. You life. know that's that's a powerful insight. Uh, I, I'm thinking he had the flashback about how Stephen was acting, that's mm. Mm. which I think probably is true. Mm. Mm. But yes. but he may have also had the flashback of how he used to act, mm -hmm. and said, "That was me." Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for the that was me before I met right. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Mm. But for the grace There's of God. For but for the grace of God, I'd still be there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, Travis, not wishing to minimize your point, the reason they made the U-turn is because the Spirit of God said, make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, not because it was easy there, right? What did the Spirit know needed to happen in that U-turn, do you think? He needed to know... Uh, uh, the people there needed to know about the love of Jesus. And it was certain that if you've stoned somebody and they're going to, he's coming back to preach to you again, it's certainly that this man loves you or cares for you somehow, some way. Then they saw Jesus flowing through. Hmm. You know, a, a, a mentor for me when I was a, just a young pastor was a, was a great preacher named George Vanderman. George Vanderman started a telecast called It Is Written. Mm. And uh, he, was, he was a wonderful man of God. And he shared the story once of going to give a Bible study to a lady and her drunk husband hit him with a bottle on his head, broke a bottle on his head. Mm. And, uh, you know, you go, I don't think I'm going to go back to the house. Well, he got his head kind of taken care of. And do you know what George did? He went back. He went back. He went back. And guess what? That man was baptized. Amen. Oh. <laughs> So what Travis is saying is there's something, there's something here that's not normal, right? Mm -hmm. That a person would go back to a place where they've been persecuted. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the message has got to go to every nation. Love Jonathan? That. It makes me think of the text that says something like um, filling up that which is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. I believe it's Paul. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, is, I mean, yeah, that we have this opportunity that we can count ourselves uh, pr privileged to um, fill, to play the same role, to walk that, that walk of Christ. And so, so what about that idea that we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom? Should we all buy little whips and start hitting ourselves? Some people think, you know, maybe go on your knees till they're bloody. Uh, that's not what it's talking about, right? What's it talking about? We must, uh, I want to make sure I don't misquote it. We must through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Are we saved by going through many tribulations? Yes or no? No. 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 Absolutely not, right? For by grace, grace, grace you've been saved, through faith. So it's not talking about how we're saved. But those who are saved will have to go through tribulations. many tribulations. So has anybody experienced that? Going through a tribulation, um, persecution, for sharing the truth about Jesus, Tigist? Uh, I wouldn't call it tribulations, but challenges. Okay. Especially about the Sabbath and going to school. And you grew up in a different country from where we're broadcasting or recording, right? Right. You grew up in? I grew up in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia? Yes, but I went to university in Kenya. In Kenya? Yes. Where did you face the, the challenge or, or the... Really, it was a form of persecution, wasn't it? <laughs> no, uh, it was in Kenya. In Kenya. I was okay. uh, doing my master's, and um, the classes were on Sabbath. Hmm. No, usually they're Monday to Friday, but this teacher decided to put an exam on Saturday. And you're in graduate school. In graduate school. So this is not like grade one, grade two primary no. <laughs> school. You're in graduate school. Right. And, and the, normally the exams are during the week. During the week. But the professor puts the exam on Sabbath, on and Sabbath. for you, Sabbath is? No, it's a Sabbath day. <laughs> That's the day of worship, right? It's the right? day of According worship, the yes. Of God. So what happened? I was lucky to have our dean, who is an Adventist, and he told the teacher that he shouldn't do that. Uh, but the person, him, the teacher himself, the professor himself, did not agree with what he did, and he went on and gave the exam. But I went forward to my dean and again, and I asked him, I, you know, you told us that it's okay for the professor to give us Adventists who are not willing to take the exams on Sabbath. And he was very upset with me. And um, he had to do the exam again for us. Wow. And God came through 
for me. Amen. And Amen. Uh, for me, I was the only one. There were other Adventists, but they took the exams. Wow. <laughs> and I didn't, and I did the exam again. So someone would say, Tigis, don't, don't be so rigid, <laughs> yes. right? Just take the exam, Stephanie. <laughs> but I, I guess I see that as a great opportunity for God to do something yeah. amazing. Yeah. And for others to see that, you know, when someone stands up, God will show up mm -hmm. in an amazing way. Anybody else want to share an experience? Well, we just got a minute left, but someone may be encouraged by your testimony. Mm -hmm. I don't want to share an experience, but I want to share an experience that Paul or Saul had on the road. And he, Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? And he wasn't persecuting Jesus personally, but he was persecuting the people who loved Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now he loves Jesus. And through his persecutions, he knows Jesus is by his side. Mm -hmm. Standing side by side with them, taking the stones with him. And that's comfort. It has to be comfort to him as he experiences these tribulations. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for my name's sake, mm. for righteousness' sake, right? Yes. Not because you were obnoxious. <laughs> God, ne God needs to tell us when to be that bold as, as Paul was in, in Cyprus, right? Not because you were obnoxious, but because you were honoring me. Mm -hmm. If you suffer for righteousness' sake, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're watching and you're saying, I'm suffering right now. Maybe not in the same way that Tigis was in her graduate program, but you're experiencing conflict. I would hear from this message in the book of Acts, don't focus on the problem. Yeah. Focus on the Savior. Amen. Call out to Him. Yes. He'll find a way. Amen. Maybe not what you expected, but He'll make a way for you to honor Him and to be a powerful witness yes. to those who just can't understand why you'd be so courageous. I want to be that kind of person. Do you? Do you want to be that kind of person? Yes. In every aspect of our lives, to honor Jesus and be faithful to Him. Let's pray that we can. Father in heaven, it's only by Your grace and through Your power that we can determine, like Paul and Barnabas and great men and women of God through the ages, to honor You no matter what, even if it means through suffering and to believe that you're able to bring us through and to honor your name and to bless those who see the witness. God, not to bring attention to ourselves, but glory to you. May we be faithful to you mm -hmm. in every aspect of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. I've been inspired. I want to be more faithful to Jesus, not to earn his love, but because he loves me with an everlasting love. I want to honor him and let my life be a witness. Go out and be that person to those around you.